he practiced what he preached in this passage in Second Timothy 4, 7, where he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. A preacher may not do all he sets out to do in his ministerial life. The reason being that he may have wanted to do some things God didn't call him to do. But he can do what God calls him to do and be faithful until the end. God's power and gifts are given with the call. No one can say, I didn't finish what God wanted me to do because he didn't give me the wisdom and power to do it. If God tells you to fly, he will give you wings. Amen? Paul is saying to Archippus, God called you, you acknowledged the call, and committed yourself to it. Now do it. Then Paul gives his personal autograph. He says, The salutation by the hand of me, Paul. In his commentating on this, Bishop Hadley Mule says, Then at the last, the Apostle Paul takes the pen from the hand of his assistant to add the accustomed autograph. Romans 16, verse 22, and 2 Thessalonians 3, 17. At the close, the token of affection and the guarantee of authenticity. There is no personal autographs of the original scriptures or any signatures of Paul. All we have are the copies of originals. But we do have the promise of the preservation of the word of God. Psalms 12, verse 6 and 7 says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them for this generation forever. Maybe the reason that God did not allow the originals to remain is because we have a tendency to worship the letter, even the translation. Then Paul says, Remember my bonds. Bishop Mule continues, as he does so, lifts his hands to personally sign the epistle, the long chain which fastens him to the warder makes itself felt and heard. And with this comes up to his soul all that it means, the affliction of the gospel, the glory of being the suffering witness of his Lord, and the Colossians shall remember it too and help him in it with their prayers. I have suffered so little for the gospel. When I come to a passage like this and realize the cost in suffering by those who got this Bible to me, I want to bow and kiss their feet as I thank the Lord who called and empowered them to do it. And then Paul says, Grace be with you. Almost all of Paul's letters begin and end with it. Romans just ends with it. Is Hebrews by Paul? Anyway, it bears his ending, this grace. Guy King, in the Crossing the Border, an expositional study of Colossians. Grace is one of the greatest words in all the Bible. It is one of the most abused and misinterpreted words. I praise the Lord for the day I begin to understand grace as a teacher in addition to the means by which I was saved. There are many years as a fundamental Baptist that I did not trust grace as a teacher of holiness. I taught that grace needed the help of law. I thank the Lord that my view of grace has changed to complete trust in her. Grace, that beautiful lady, as the only teacher of holiness that produces a humble holiness and not a self-righteous, arrogant one. I will end this meditation with the words of Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Complete in me. Lord, the place of thine, thy blood hath poured and bought for me, and I shall stand complete in thee. Yea,
justify.